can never verify my identity. Sorry to hear that. Sergeant Pepper Seltzer. <laughs> All the magical bubbles. Uh, we're back, baby. Feels good. Feels good. Season Feels like there's two. something different about season two. Uh, the room is different. The room is it's a, a lot very different, different room. Uh, we're happy to be recording from the Golden Ox Studios here in Cleveland, Ohio. It's got it set up like the uh, dungeon and video drone. There's cameras everywhere. Long live the new flesh, baby. That's where I've seen this before. Yeah, <laughs> in that fever dream. Very Cronenbergian. I feel like and that's not a knock on it at all. This that's, whole atmosphere. That's definitely. That's definitely out of respect. We got a new row of uh, characters that whole, are technically real people, but a whole fresh row of figures. Who do you have? Um, I've for, so for today's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, Sir Robert Peel. Tell me about this guy. Uh, he's after yours, though. Um, you got Beardsley, right? Yes. Yeah. What's, what's Beardsley's first name? Uh, Aubrey. 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 Very gender neutral name. I didn't know that. I always thought Aubrey was just. Just the girl's name. I know Augie is a guy's name. So, yeah, Aubrey Vincent Beardsley. He only lived to be about 25 years old, so he must have made quite the impact. 821-1872 to uh, 216-1898. He was an English illustrator and author. Audrey Beardsley was friends with Oscar Wilde. Wilde. And other uh, aestheticism artists. He was probably gay. Although there were rumors that he and his sister used to do it with each other. That's not the definition of gay. That's why I said although. (laughs) I didn't say plus him and his... But yeah, um, Oscar Wilde described him as the most monstrous of orchids. Ooh, that's good. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's a good title. I would like to hear a bunch of poets doing a roast battle. I don't know if that's ever been done. That would be amazing. That could be fabricated, I'm sure. I feel like there would be less laughing and more just oohs and ahs, right? Beardsley illustrated Oscar Wilde's play, Salome. Salome. It was, uh, or Salami, I don't know how it's pronounced. It was just for the English translation, but he didn't seem to like it. He said, they're like naughty scribbles a a precocious schoolboy makes on the margin of his copybooks. Oscar Wilde was a dick. Damn. It was like supposedly his friend. His sister, the reason the reason people were so like it's only rumored, but there was a strong pos him and his sister were really close. She used to cross dress. Aubrey Beardsley's sister was a known cross dresser, and that's why and people thought that she was his muse. They might have had a sexual relationship. He was sort of like a, if you look up his art, he was like a fancier Patrick Nagel, which I never realized Patrick Nagel almost had like a Art Nouveau style because it's like the vertical or the portrait style, Mm -hmm. you know, drawings. Um, If you look at a lot of old Coca-Cola drawings, they have like a similar vibe. If when you're looking at Patrick Nagel, it's almost like an 80s Art Nouveau, you know, very sexy. Maybe a little Vargas-ish too. Because that's, yeah. that's what I kind of see when I picture like Coca-Cola. A year before Beardsley died, he converted to Catholicism. And then he wrote a letter to his publisher and one of his besties, two different people. And they be- he begged them to destroy all of his obscene drawings. He considered like so much of his work obscene. But instead, they just didn't care. And his publisher even sold reproductions and forgeries. Oh, damn. So he just did the complete opposite. In 2019... The National Leather Association International named an award after him for people who make the sexiest abstract art. The Beardley Award, huh? So there's still people that know and care about this guy. I don't know why the Beatles would give two poops about him, but... Who's your guy? My guy... Uh, Sir Robert Peel, uh, not French or Irish, um, English. Sir Robert Peel was a prime minister of the UK. Kind of weird to 
I don't know. I, I find that a, a weird choice for the album cover here. But um, yeah, he was born on February 5th in 1788 and lived till 1850. Uh, he was one of 11 children. Um, and before he was prime minister of the UK, he was a British conservative statesman. I guess it's like what you got to do sometimes before you do it. Well, John Lennon liked Nazis too, didn't he? Uh, wasn't he super into Nazis? <laughs> Uh, he wasn't not into him. Um, but speaking of Nazis, um, one interesting, the most glaring thing that I learned about uh, Sir Robert Peel is the father of modern policing. So, like, the inventor of cops. In okay. A um, and that's why they call them Bobbies and peeler, uh, Peelers. Peelers, yeah. Bobbies and Peelers. I've heard Bobbies. Yeah. What else? Uh, he was a... Uh, he was called actually um, a liberal wolf in sheep's clothing because he ran on the more conservative ticket but did more liberal, made more liberal decisions. He always put the nation before uh, like his party and stuff. So actually, despite, you know, his report card, um, might actually, not, I don't want to be an apologist for Sir Robert Peel. Yeah. Not that he needs one, I don't think. He's got a lot of statues about him. Um, and he was quite revered. Um, when he died, like the whole nation went in mourning. Uh, and a funny thing about uh, when he died, how he died, he fell off his horse and was then trampled by his horse and then died a couple of days later that due to complications. That sounds like Shangri-La to me. Between the two of them, May West would probably 100% go for Beardsley. That would be my guess. Oh, every time. She's all about the artists. Yeah. She never goes with the politicians. She wants like everyone to draw her. <laughs> yeah. All right. We entered it in. Here is a fictional... Well... Dialogue between May West and the iconic actress... And Aubrey Beardsley, the influential English illustrator and author from the late 19th century. They're at the party. Yes. Okay. Well, 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 Mr. Beardsley. It's quite a pleasure to meet an artist of your caliber. I've always admired your intricate and provocative illustrations. Thank you, Miss West. I must say your charm and wit have made quite an impression on me as well. Your performance on stage and screen are truly captivating. Oh, you flatter me, Mr. Beardsley. But I do believe that art and entertainment go hand in hand. We both have a way of stirring emotions and pushing boundaries, don't we? Indeed, we do, Miss West. Art should challenge conventional norms just as your risque humor and bold persona challenge societal expectations. We both seek to ignite a spark of curiosity and intrigue in our audiences. That's right, darling. Life's too short to play it safe. <laughs> we must embrace our uniqueness and express ourselves freely. It seems we share a similar philosophy. Absolutely, Miss West. The freedom of expression is essential for artists and performers alike. Without it, we cannot truly explore the depths of our creativity. I couldn't agree with you more, Mr. Beardsley. It's about pushing the boundaries, exploring the uncharted territories of art, and leaving a lasting impact on those who experience our work. Precisely, Miss West. It's though our it's through our audacity and originality that we create a lasting legacy. We create the status quo and inspire future generations to break free from convention. Well said, Mr. Beardsley. Let's continue to shake things up and make our mark on the world. The artist's path may not always be easy, but it's certainly worth it. I couldn't agree more, Miss West. It's been an absolute pleasure discussing art and creativity with you. May we both continue to inspire and captivate audiences with our unique visions. Thank you, Mr. Beardsley. The pleasure is all mine. Here's to pushing boundaries and creating... Art that leaves a lasting impression. Cheers. All right, I feel like ChatGPT is getting a little redundant. Mm. It's sort. It's starting to remind me of Kevin Smith. If you told me Kevin Smith wrote that, I would believe it, because he can only write from one character perspective, and then he has to just change the names, and that's what it felt like. I love Kevin Smith. 
Beardsley just, just Beardsley just agrees with everything. Yeah, <laughs> she says absolutely, indeed, me too. It's like they're just Precisely. throwing up into each other's mouths back and forth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm puking in your mouth, Miss West. <laughs> now I'm puking in your mouth, Mister Beardsley. Now I'm gonna puke in your sister's mouth. <laughs> If that's all right with you. Hey, that would have shaken things up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That would have been more of the boundary pushing they were talking about. Uh, should we throw her in? Yeah, let's, <laughs> we could throw her into the mix. There has yeah. to be a believable reason why she's there, though. I don't uh, get off on... they were never apart, maybe. I don't know if okay. they were... They were... Oh, Beardsley's sister? Yeah, Beardsley's oh, sister. Oh, yeah, she yeah. was a cross-dresser. Let's get her in there. Yeah. You ask ChatGPT and they provide. Certainly, here's a fictional conversation okay. <laughs> between Mae West. Now, they say fictional, but we, we know that you were there. Are we retconning the old conversation, or is this actually a follow-up to the original conversation? Uh, I said another. Um, I think I think this one's going to trump the other one. Uh, oh. Goodness, now. Well, 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 look who we have here, Aubrey Beardsley and his lovely sister Mabel. It's a pleasure to meet you both. Good to see you again, Miss West, and this is my dear sister Mabel. She shares my passion for art and literature. Pleasure to meet you, Miss West. Aubrey has told me so much about you and your captivating performances. Your presence in the entertainment industry is truly remarkable. Thank you, Mabel. I'm flattered to hear that. And I must say, Aubrey has quite the talent for illustration. His work continues to inspire me. Your words mean a lot, May. Coming from someone as influential as you, it's truly an honor. Aubrey, your illustrations are nothing short of extraordinary. <laughs> I don't know what this sounds like. No, keep doing it. You have a unique ability to capture the essence of a story through your intricate and striking artwork. Mabel, your brother's creativity knows no bounds. His illustrations have a certain allure and mystique that draws the viewer in. It's as if each stroke of his pen tells a story. I'm glad you feel that way, May and Mabel. <laughs> May and <laughs> taking that back. I'm glad you feel that way, May and Mabel. Art has always been a way for me to express my thoughts and emotions, to challenge the norms and expectations of society. Aubrey's illustrations have certainly pushed the boundaries of art. His boldness and willingness to explore unconventional themes has inspired many artists, including myself. That's the beauty of art, isn't it, honey? It allows us to break free from the chains of conformity and express ourselves authentically. Aubrey, you and Mabel both embody that spirit. Thank you, May. I've always believed that art should challenge, provoke, and ultimately leave a lasting impact on the viewer. It's encouraging to know that others resonate with that sentiment. Absolutely, Aubrey. <laughs> Art has the power to transcend time and connect people across generations. It's an incredible gift that we both share. Well said, both of you. Let's continue to embrace our artistic passions and inspire others along the way. The world needs more individuals who dare to create and challenge the status quo. I couldn't agree more, May. Here's to art, creativity, and the pursuit of passions. May we continue to make a lasting impact on the world. Cheers to that. Let our art be a testament to the beauty of self-expression and the power of imagination. It's been a pleasure conversing with you both. Please remember that this dialogue is internally fictional, and the real-life interactions between Mae West, Aubrey Beardsley, and Mabel Beardsley, if any, are unknown. See, but that's just what it's trying to tell us. They have to put that there. I want to get From back to um, Revolution Number 9 you were talking about. Yeah. Um, I listened to that song on acid one time, and I was convinced that the Beatles were worshipping Satan, even if just ironically. You know what I mean? Just for a little, you know, ramp. Yeah. Romp, just a little, you know, for fun. Well, maybe not. Maybe it wasn't fun. Maybe they needed to do that. Um, and what do you get when you turn a nine upside down? Six. Six. Number six. Number, Number six. six. Number, Number six. six. Damn. It's like saying Candyman three times. You say number six three times. They say it the more Behringer. than three times. Oh, they do. But if it's anything like an ellipsis, 
as long as they only say it in an increments of three times, Ooh. then it's just like they're saying it a lot of times. Yeah, it is kind of like a chant, isn't it? Yeah. Album came out today. Who, who do you oh. think would be? Let's let's just, let's go left to right. Let's start with Beardsley. Okay, Beardsley. Um, no, it can't be Andy Warhol. Could it? Why not? Yeah, sure could be. John Waters. No. Mm. No, because he reminds me of John Waters. Family. He reminds me of Nagel a little bit, but I think. What if we peppered just a bunch more Nagels? No, uh, he reminds <laughs> me. His sister well, no, reminds it, me it of one be, of the Patrick Nagel girls. We could do Nagel because we just have the girl. We yeah, don't have him on there. What if it's just Robert Palmer? I like the, I like the leap. Yeah, all I right, like the leap Robert a lot. Palmer. Because mm-hmm. Robert Palmer had all those Nagel girls playing the guitar. They weren't really playing, but that wasn't the object of it. They were just supposed to look like Patrick Nagel girls. Yeah, and like and this doesn't have to be one for ones. Obviously, no. I mean, Robert Palmer was a great artist. Mm-hmm. He recorded "Addicted to Love" and. Simply irresistible. Simply irresistible. Yeah, I think it's the second time we was definitely the second time we've mentioned him. Yeah. We, did, we did mention him during the the Nagel so episode. So how about I mean, Beardsley uh, is just Robert Palmer with all four of the of the Robert Palmer girls behind him? <laughs> or can we just change four people that surround Aubrey Beardsley <laughs> into Patrick Nagel girls and then make Beardsley Robert Palmer? <laughs> Um, we can do whatever we want, but we have to agree. There's, there's not a lot of room there, so we would have to take some people away. And on, honestly, um, it's Andy Warhol. It's Andy Warhol. All right, I'll, I'll I'll turn my key for Andy Warhol. We brought him up. They're earlier. the same dude. They're yeah. perverts. It's a little closer to a one to one there, which it doesn't have to be, but it's cool when we can. Uh, this next one though, um. Uh, who are you thinking? I'm kind of drawing a blank uh, for Sir Robert Peel. I keep focusing on like a cop, you know, like the inventor of cops. Frank Serpico. You have to educate me in Serpico. Sir, Frank Serpico? Frank Serpico is arguably the only good cop that's ever lived. Hmm. He joined the force as a young man thinking that he was going to, you know, be this like good cop. And then all the cops in his department were scumbags. Right. And he knew this, but he wasn't really all that messed up about it. He was just keeping to himself. But they didn't like that because he they go to the coffee shop. He'd pay for his own coffee instead of taking the free coffee. They're like, this dude's not on the take. Mm. So they ended up having to raid this house. And they had him go in first, and they didn't give him any backup. He gets shot in the face, gets real pissed off. That's it. He's like, this is the last straw. Ends up taking down the entire precinct for police corruption. It goes to, like, the Supreme Court or wherever those type of thing goes. He takes the whole department down. And then Al Pacino played him in a movie. It's a completely true story. Like I said, it's got to be a movie. The about actual, that. yeah, it's called Serpico. It's a classic oh. movie. But the guy that, uh, but Frank Serpico himself was on the set the whole time because uh, I guess just as, um, you know, for like no. as a reference or whatever to be mm-hmm. like, oh, this is believable. This isn't. But apparently, like they had to like remove him from the set because he was just like a little schoolboy. Just getting all excited to be to be like on a movie set, talking uh-huh. to everyone, uh-huh. probably bothering Al Pacino. You know, he's like, "Get out of here!" I don't know. He doesn't like being bothered. But yeah, I'm sure. yeah. I say, I say, uh, I say, let's go with Serpico because Serpico was a just cop. Mm-hmm. Who do you think? Well, I was thinking of uh, so like he's a cop, and you know, like I said, they're in kind of. They're in a certain light, 
Um, but there's good cop, there's bad cop. And then in the Lego movie, there's a character called good cop, bad cop, uh, who just switches his head around, <laughs> and then he's the other cop. Um, so I was thinking of that character. But at the end of the movie, spoiler alert for the Lego movie, uh, they take nail polish removal or polish remover of Nail onto the face of the good cop. So it's just a blank face. So the Lego movie is a horror movie. Oh, it's dark. People just can just get their faces removed whenever? No more Mr. Nice Guy. You could just wipe. <laughs> if someone wants to kill you, they can just spray that Polish de Nail onto like your bath towel and then you get out of the shower and you wipe your face off and you can't breathe anymore because your mouth is gone. And then you have to throw away that perfectly good Sergeant Pepper's Only Hearts Club band towel because <laughs> it's been tainted. So I would, I, my vote, I was going to say just a blank Lego head, but like with the cop body piece. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, that'd be fun. I think the Beatles would approve. The Beatles are because made in Legos Lego. weren't around. Legos weren't as popular as they were. I honestly think that if the Sergeant Pepper came out and Legos were as popular back in the '60s as they are now, or Lego, it's all it's all plural. I think that, I appreciate you I saying think that. There would be a giant Lego person like on the cover. They might not be like in the front row or the back row, but it would be like how they got all those Shirley Temples. There's so many Shirley Temples. There'd be like a bunch of little Lego figures in there. That's American right there. Holy smokes. You're bringing up all the Shirley Temples, which we always we always comment on. But we asked, how did everyone get here? How did we get so many Shirley Temples? They must have some kind of cloning device as Jeez. well. Jeez. Or like a Shirley Temple factory. Hmm. So it sounds like we got our replacements. Yeah. Sounds like uh, Mae West uh, isn't really going to go. Bases are loaded. No. Yeah. Bases, bases are, are as loaded as WC Fields. I want to thank you for listening and invite you to come back next week when we talk about WC Field of Dreams. No, that was last season. Who is it again for next week? Oh, Dylan Thomas and Aldous Huxley.